Hello, everyone. Hope you guys are having a great start of the year. Here to keep you up to date with the current market conditions. So I'll go ahead and jump right into it. So I just want to go ahead and share my screen here right quick. Um, and firstly, kind of want to start off with um, little slides I made over here. So uh, the business cycle, right? Just like the cycle of life itself, right? Um, the markets have what they call the business cycle such as uh, expansion, typically good market conditions, um, home prices going up, stock markets going up, peak, there'd be the peak of everything, the highs um, for that period of time. And then of course the contraction, the recession, uh, the throth, uh, so the bottom, and then again, the next expansion and peak and so forth. So the business cycle, right? Um, so without a doubt, I would say uh, after the COVID uh, pandemic, you know, Federal Reserve, um, there was a market crash, right? March 2020, Federal Reserve steps in, saves the market, lowers interest rates, sends out stimulus checks, so stimulates the market um, and creates an expansion. That was basically 20... Uh, second quarter on to like fourth quarter 2021 we saw a big economic boom right that would have been the expansion in the business cycle um and this case typically during the expansion phase inflation may begin to rise and that will lead the federal reserve to um start tight money policies right um you would call that uh, quantitative tightening, right? So they would reduce the money supply, raise interest rates, make it more expensive to borrow money. Typically that now um, leads the business cycle into a contraction, a recession, which is I 100% believe in that that's currently what we're experiencing, right? And possibly might experience throughout this year. Typically throughout the uh, recession, at some point when things get really bad, Federal Reserve again steps in with easy money policy um, to stop the contraction, stop the recession, right? Bring the economy out of a recession. So easy money, uh, the fancy word they use for it is quantitative easing, which is just a fancy word to say that the Federal Reserve is going to lower interest rates to stimulate the economy because interest rates are lower people are going to borrow more money for purchases right and they're just going to um basically print money via purchasing um treasuries and so forth so that leads to what currently is going on right which is what i've been talking about yield curves right um typically when people talk about yield curves they're talking about the bond market right and the bond market is basically the iou market right you're borrowing money with the expectation to pay it back at a future date. And typically the yield curve in the bond market, um, the focus is treasuries, right? Government, U.S. treasury bills, bonds and so forth, right? So what I've been talking about is that the yield curve for the bond market is inverted. So I'll point out here inverted or negative yield curve right as you can see the y-axis for the yield whatever the percentage of return for that specific treasury is and then maturity right how many years until that um bond uh, matures and pays back uh, the principal right inverted yield curve is when short-term interest rates are higher than long-term interest rates a sign of a potential recession we currently have a inverted yield curve in the bond market, which I will again show you shortly. Typically what you want in the bond market is a positive yield curve. The one over here, positive yield curve is when long-term interest rates are higher than short-term interest rates, a sign of a healthy economy expansion phase, right? Typically, the longer the uh, the maturity of the, the bond is, the higher the interest rate it's going to pay you, right? Which makes more sense. If you're lending out money for 30 years, your money's at risk for 30 years. Shouldn't you be compensated at higher return of interest? 
that if you lend money for three months and get paid, um, your money is at risk at a shorter period of time. Therefore, you should get paid less interest, right? Because it's less risky. Um, so here basically leads me to kind of paint the picture of the inverted yield curve. Um, so I keep kind of showing this chart, these charts over here on the left, you got the three month U.S. Treasury uh, bill uh, uh, here in the center. You got the 10 year U.S. Treasury bond. And then all the way on the right, you got the 30 year U.S. Treasury bond. So inverted yield curve. Why? Short term interest rates are paying more than long term interest rates. I mean, just think of it logically. Why would you lend out money? 30 years when you're only getting paid 3.6% on your money when you can lend it out for three months and only have your money at risk for three months and get paid 4.6% return on your money. It just doesn't make absolutely any sense. Um, and uh, uh, so, I mean, it's clear we're in a recession um, and it's clear that we have an inverted yield curve, which has never been wrong about predicting uh, a recession. I mean, obviously, we're in a recession. Market did negative twenty percent last year, year of twenty twenty two. But I find it funny that all these articles keep saying um, economy could tip into a recession. Although we are already clear in recession, the only thing I would say is economy could uh, tip into a depression, not a recession. So yeah, World Bank warns global economy could tip into recession in 2023. I'm pretty sure we've been in a recession already, but all these articles tend to spin it off like this, right? So World Bank, World Bank is um, headquarters in Washington um, here in the US. It's a massive bank that all um, countries have a involvement into in one way or another. Basically, the World Bank is like the IMF, the International Monetary Fund. So they are the world's lenders. They lend money to other countries and so forth, emerging markets. That's what the World Bank does. So the World Bank oversees basically the global economy. And the World Bank, as long as, as well as other banks have been continuously saying that they're predicting things to slow down even more in the year 2023. So uh, here they go on saying, as the impact of central bank rate hikes intensify, Russia's war in Ukraine continues and the world's major economies engine sputter. So basically the Russian Ukraine war has been ongoing for a long time. War is an inflationary um, events only reason why the inflationary event hasn't been um, that bad in terms of inflation is because the Federal Reserve is raising rates extremely fast. And that puts a lid on inflation. Why? Because the U.S. has the world reserve currency. The dollar is the dollar wherever you go, right? So the bank, um, the World Bank is basically saying that they expect... So, so the bank said major slowdowns in advanced economies, including sharp cuts to its forecast of a 0.5% for the United States and flat GDP for the Eurozone could foreshadow a new global recession less than three years after the, la the last one. So basically they're talking about March, 2020 when the market crashed. Given fragile economic conditions, any new adverse developments such as higher than expected inflation Abrupt rises in interest rates to contain it. A resurgence of the COVID-19 pandemic or escalating geopolitical tensions such as political events, maybe um, issues with China or so forth. Um, so yeah, basically a lot of the banks are, are signaling, again, they say potential recession, we're already in a recession. So I don't know what comes after recession is the depression, right? So a lot of these banks, are, I notice, um, such as JP Morgan, uh, Bank of America, and so forth, they're ramping up their cash reserves, and they're advising that they're seeing, they're predicting that a lot of loans will go bad, meaning a lot of people they lend money to are not going to be able to repay those loans, and the banks might potentially take losses on those loans from those borrowers that are not able to pay those loans back. So me personally, I'm speculating that um, the banks 
are going to lose in the near future a lot of money coming from um, the car market. Why? Um, 2020, 2021, car prices went out of control, right? The cars were selling above retail price. A lot of people were borrowing money to purchase these cars and they were buying these cars above retail price. Um, if you look up to uh, some of these car auctioning websites, the numbers of cars in their inventory are skyrocketing per day, meaning a lot of cars are being repossessed. The cars that are being repossessed are not being sold and inventory of vehicles are building up. That means there's a lot of supplies of cars at some point, which the car market bubble has already popped. Some point there's going to be so much uh, supply of vehicles that these cars prices are going to go down dramatically. Being that the bank lent money for someone to buy these cars and they're not going to be able to potentially sell it back for what they lend the money out for, these banks are going to take major losses. How this is going to affect everything else, I have no idea. But I find it interesting that the car market always is involved some shape, way, or form in potential um market downturns for example in 2008 uh, ford and gm orders had to be bailed out by the mark uh by the government so the it's like uh trends skyrocketing uh oil prices car market turns into a mess what comes next i have no clue but that's the same thing that happened in 2008 oil prices went ballistic car market got hit pretty hard housing bust that was the pattern in 2008 i don't know what the pattern is going to be now but it seems like banks are preparing for something bad to happen um so with that being said i'll leave you with a quote which kind of aligns with what i was talking about so when short-term interest rates treasury bills exceed the rate the rates on long-term treasury bonds watch out this is often the precursor to a recession, and it's rarely been a false signal. So basically, every time the yield curve has inverted, without a doubt, it's always been a red flag um, leading into an economic recession. So with that being said, Thank you for watching. I hope I shared some awesome um, information with you today. And if I could be of any help or if you need any more information, feel free to reach out. Thank you. And I'll catch you guys on the next one.